Indonesia's easternmost province of Papua is home to one of the world's largest forest areas, nearly 41 million hectares, an area almost three times the size of England. Yet Indonesia has been reported to have one of the highest deforestation rates in the world, with the Indonesian Forestry Ministry revealing that the country lost 3.5 million hectares between 2003 and 2006, or more than 1 million hectares a year. The majority of deforestation has occurred on the islands of Sumatra and Borneo. However, many observers believe Papua will be next. Ministry figures say Papua lost nearly 80,000 hectares of forest between the same period. However, some environmental organisations estimate much larger rates of up to 300,000 hectares of forest loss per year. As the government decides how it will develop Papua, experts are looking at how this can be done in a way that makes most sense for the economy, local people and the natural environment. The Centre for International Forestry Research, CIFOR, the Agricultural Research Centre for International Development, CIRAD, and Conservation International Indonesia have been conducting research on development in Papua for the last eight years. In 2010, the scientists began researching the potential to involve local communities in the land use decisions of local governments through a project called Collaborative Land Use Planning in the Context of Climate Change in Indonesia. The team of scientists focused their research on the Mambrambo region in the northern part of Papua province. Development is one of the uh, most important goals for people in Papua and more especially in, in Mambrambo. Our project doesn't aim uh, to say what is good, what is wrong. What we tried to do was to bring people together and to discuss about that. The project actually is helping their, the local community uh, to get in touch directly uh, with their own governments uh, to prepare uh, about um, conservation and also development that really meet uh, the, the green economic goals and strategy for the governments of Mambramoraya. Land use planning is the main tool used by the government to manage the area, with maps playing an important role in developing official land use plans. So far, the local people, who have the rights to this territory and possess a high level of ecological knowledge, have not been included in decision making. The scientists visited Mambrambo region over 10 days in 2012 to introduce the Mambrambo government and community to methods such as group discussions, interviews and participatory mapping that the scientists developed to assist them in creating a land use plan together. Ini bagaimana masyarakat memandang uh, penggunaan lahan untuk saat ini dibandingkan dengan masa depan. The workshop for us was a way to put everybody, all the stakeholders together and to discuss around the results that we brought back. I think that was something that never happened in Mambramoraya before and everybody was quite enthusiastic with that. that uh, and I think the out, outcome of the workshop was valuable for the local government, for villagers also in the end. Yang saya tangkap itu adalah bagaimana masyarakat bisa menyampaikan aspirasinya, menyampaikan pendapat tentang peta itu. Mereka bisa baca peta itu, itu yang paling penting. Kemudian pemerintah kabupaten e, mengambil itu sebagai bagian dalam proses perencanaan. Apa saja, mulai kita mulai penataan kota, sampai kita rencana mengajukan ini untuk taman nasional. 
peta ini juga menjadi bagian yang terintegrasi bahwa kita jelaskan bahwa hampir di seluruh wilayah konservasi ini penduduk itu punya lahan-lahan yang memang merupakan hak layak dan itu harus dijaga yang ada sekarang yang kita lihat ada peta saat ini dan peta masa for local government they fought at the beginning that villager didn't understand anything about RTR where about land use plan about maps and uh, they were really surprised to see how confident were the villagers to explain their own maps and to locate themselves in this big territory and to say this is what we want and for what reason. One of the key tools used was map making. The government found it could use these maps to develop land use strategies and the local people recognized them as an effective negotiation tool. Unlike a report, the participatory map can be easily understood by local people as it's presented in a visual way to describe what really matters for local community in terms of biodiversity, forest resource and landscape in, as well as how people use their land uh, at present and what they plan for the future. Jadi kami punya kampung ada di tempat hijau ini. Peta itu sebagai untuk bisa mengetahui mana yang hutan yang bisa dibangun dan mana yang hutan yang tidak bisa dibangun. Dan hutan yang dibangun itulah tempat untuk masyarakat cari makan dan berkebun. Peta itu dia bisa mempatasi, kita bisa tunjuk itu mempatasi kalau macam ada pengusaha atau perusahaan-perusahaan yang masuk juga kita bisa lihat antara suku dengan suku atau marga dengan marga kita bisa tahu persis di sini tempat keramat di sini tempat mencari makan dan saya harus lewat di sini artinya jalan kalau harapan kami ke depan peta itu digunakan oleh pemerintah secara baik Pemetaan ini penting, sesungguhnya untuk membantu pemerintah daerah dalam rangka mem membuat perencanaan. Dari pemetaan ini kan selain memetakan batas antara kampung dengan kampung secara adat, tapi juga potensi yang ada di dalamnya. Ini misalnya hutan bakau, ini hutan sagu, ini tempat udang, ini tempat ikan, kerang, dan lain sebagainya. Ini kan memberikan gambaran kepada pemerintah bahwa contoh, di kampung Yoke, untuk menata ekonomi atau menata kesejahteraan masyarakat di Yoke itu kita mulai dari sini. Itu juga peta ini akan sangat membantu kami. Ini dari dalam Bebai, akan keluar ke kampung Yoke. Community members from one of the villages, Yoke, use the maps to inform the government on the likely negative environmental impacts of its plan to enlarge a narrow water channel between Mambrambo River and the mangroves where the village stands as a shorter transportation route. They warned the government that a man-made water channel that was built in the past by an oil exploration company for transportation from Lake Tabarisia to Upper Ware River impacted on the environment. Terjadi lumpur masuk dari sungai Power, air kabur itu PC. Dia timbung, akhirnya danau itu dia kembali pendek, kita dia panjang, dan ikan itu banyak banding, bobara, lasi dan lain-lain itu banyak bermain di situ. Tapi setelah dia keruk di situ, PC lumpur dari Power masuk, dia sudah mundur pendek dan ikan kurang begitu. Scientists had the opportunity to visit the channel to observe the situation. We are at the end of uh, Lake Tabaresia, and this is the place where the villager. Uh, um, complain about the activity 40 years ago of uh, a company exploring uh, for oil 
and uh, who dig the channel that link a power with uh, Tabaricia Lake behind me. Uh, and we can see when we when we go out of this channel that uh, even on the lake close to here, the soil, the ground is going out of the water, so and the trees are, are growing there. So in a few years, the lake will will be uh, smaller and smaller. The local people use maps to illustrate how a channel from Yoke Village to Lake Rombabai instead of Mumbrumbo River would enable Yoke Village access to the Greater Regency and simultaneously be better for the environment. This is because a river already exists between Yoke and Rombabai and only requires enlarging the riverbed. It also avoids silting, which would have occurred between the channel from Yoke to Mumbrumbo River if it was made. Peta ini dia berguna untuk masa depan kita anak cucu yang akan datang. Bukan hanya kita saja. It is hoped that this proposal has been able to provide the Mambrumbo community, together with the government, with the tools to ensure better collaborative land management for conservation and development for the future.